Mm, interesting. It's a poster for a video game called Gangland Bitches 2. <laughs> it's a poster for a game called G. It's sort of a dinosaur rapper staring at me looking oh so hard. <laughs> it's a video game called Big Fucking Guns. Seems dinosaurs don't have any problem putting swear words in the titles of games. We should call your next game Dirty Bed Buckets. Or not. <laughs> okay, anyway. We've distracted that dinosaur for some reason, so let's go over and figure out what it is. Oh, it's probably to nick his Death Star, isn't it? So we can get that plutonium laser for some reason. Oh, God. Oh, no, we didn't nick it. We killed another... What's we... <laughs> What with bashing that priest to death, poisoning those three louts with alcohol, and now this. It's turning out to be quite an eventful day for you, isn't it? Whoops. Why would I do that? Ben's rampage of death and destruction is apparently not limited to the human race. Here, he savagely butchered a highly evolved dinosaur to death in order to thieve his trinkets. Will this madness never end? Ah, that's why. I do things and then figure out why I did them afterwards. Cool. Hmm. Maybe that's a key. Let's look at this computer. Oh, I can't. Okay. Talk to the dead. Excuse me, Mr. Dinosaur. Are you alright? Bugger. Let's talk to Dan. What do you make of the quality of this dialogue so thus far, Dan? I think on the whole it's been quite positive. Except this bit, which I found a bit lacklustre. I'll say. <laughs> Let's take a look at this thing. It's an X-Wing toy, Red 5, no doubt. Yeah. This is Red 5, I'm going in. Okay, I think that's this room dimension thing sorted. What's wrong? It smells like alien in here. Can you smell that? It certainly does smell a little more alien-y than before, yes. They've been here, the nippy little alien bastards. Oh, look, there's a new door in that wall. Really? Where? Just there, look, in the, dir in the direction we're looking. It's just slightly ajar. Can you see it? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Why is anyone supposed to see that, for fuck's sake? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's great. Uh, what are they talking about? I don't see it. Oh, there. Hey, it's the secret words off the screen that I wasn't before. <laughs> I think this is our most intriguing adventure ever. Through there, nice. Ooh, oh my God, this, this is horrible. It's the worst dimension yet. A room full of stuff we've done and said and, and that. Oh, the horror, the horror. Relax, chum. This isn't a different dimension. This is just a hidden surveillance room on the ship. Oh, really? Whew. No, wait. That's even worse, isn't it? Could be. Let's explore a little and find out exactly what's going on here. Hmm. Look at this machine. Hey, it's us. Oh, look. There's a nice one of you killing that priest in a brutal and horrific fashion. Oh, Jesus. You don't think this, this whole thing has been some sort of elaborate entrapment sting by operation by the Rosas, do you? I'd say it's highly unlikely. Where would they get a spaceship for stars? Yeah, you're right, you're right. Phew. <laughs> look, you can see the rubber chicken thing and something. Oh, and look, he's killing the priest. And him playing the game. Yeah. What's this? It's a low tech computer screen displaying profiles of Dan and me. Although I'm the only one they've deemed worthy of a picture. Under special skills, it says here that I am an excellent leader 
and I get an A at picking up things without examining them thoroughly first. <laughs> awesome. What does it list as my special skills? Light switches. Damn it. The crowbar. It's a crowbar. Just like the one you find on Earth. Aliens must hate crows as much as we do. <laughs> Look at me, I'm Gordon Freeman. Woo! You're an idiot is what you are. Whatever, Barney. <laughs> What's this? It's some sort of little panel and there are currently five lights on it and they are red. You think those details are important? I have no idea, but I thought I'd better highlight them, just in case, you know? Hmm. There's no buttons on it, just lights. I wonder what they relate to. Me too. Something vitally important, no doubt. Dan, you do something with it. You think you can change the colour or number of the lights? No? Why? Oh, no reason, really. I just think the whole vibe of this room would be much better with three green lights instead of five red ones, don't you? Um, I genuinely have no idea. <laughs> Strange. Dialogue. It's a board full of surveillance photos of us and such like. There's also a map here pointing to the precise coordinates of where we live. Most freakily of all, though, is a timeline detailing our precise actions running from the instant we entered the flat. Let me guess, that runs right up to where we are and what we're doing at this precise instant, right? Right? Worse. It seems to run beyond the stuff we've done. Apparently, what we do next is... Hot Spanner, Cold Gear, then after that, Super Museum Yang. Do you know what all this means? What? It means this is definitely our most intriguing adventure yet. I agree. I'm completely intrigued. I can't wait to see what happens next. Well, Hot, then Cold, then Super Museum, obviously. Hmm. Well, there's certainly nothing super about a boring old museum, that's for sure. Hmm. About over here. It's an eerily eerie looking notice board with images of us on it. There's one here of me taking a dump. Who the hell would want a photo of me straining away on the live on the lavvy? No one I can think of, that's for sure. These must be the most brutally horrific aliens in the universe, surely. Up here? These are instructions for our TV. Some bits have been highlighted with a pink highlighter. Aerial frequency, voltage, that sort of thing. I get the impression we've been set up here, pal. Hmm, it certainly does seem a mite odd. So, what? The aliens broke our aerial deliberately? Why? So we'd have to stick some met something metal out of the window in order for them to zap us here to their mothership. Doesn't that plan seem a little high maintenance to you? Don't look at me, I'd assume they were just trying to pick up Magnum P.I. too. <laughs> Let's see what we can do with this panel here. Now listen here, alien. Daniel and I have had just about as much of this as we're going to take. You can just about zap us back to Earth right now, mister. Do I make myself quite clear? I don't think that's an alien, Ben. I think it's like a computer or something. Really? It doesn't look like a computer. Yeah, well, that's because it's a very old computer. Oh. Well, I wish you'd test them a little sooner, you know. I went into my whole big spiel about come and get us and that. Yeah, I heard. Well, I feel silly now. Oh, no. There's no need to feel silly. It's just not an alien is all. Easy to mistake to make. Really? Really. Now let's forget all about it. Thanks, I appreciate that. Not an alien, huh? Huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dan, do something with it. 
Dan, you're a marvel with modern junkets like this. I say the way you handled that light switch back there, it was exemplary. Now do something with this. Use it to drive us back to Earth or some such. Yes, because flying an alien vessel is the same as turning off our bathroom light. Right, so make it work. I'm sorry, Ben. This workstation is beyond even me. They're running Mac OS, you see. Sorry, is there some sort of nerd joke I'm supposed to get or something? So obviously the uh, heavy dialogue in this game means I can't actually do much commentary because I'm doing the lines mostly, but um, I hope it's still entertaining. I mean, obviously it, it, it's an entertaining game, so hopefully that part of it should be interesting at least. Uh, yeah. So this is obviously where we stick the X-Wing in. You can see that. And look. Whoa, I can feel the heat blast from here. You go in first, Dan. Not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, good old Dan. He's useless. Man, I hope these aliens put a holiday resort dimension through one of these doors. Maybe these are their holiday resorts. Maybe we unknowingly won an intergalactic competition. And they think that all these shenanigans would be just as relaxing for Earth folk. Well, in that case, I hope this is a complaints department dimension. Oh. Oh no, a dimension where global warming has destroyed the planet. Damn you! Damn you all to hell! I don't think global warming would just cause a volcano to just appear like that. Really? Oh well, we almost learned a valuable moral lesson there. Maybe next dimension, buddy. Oh my god, that's horrific. What even is it, even? Can't you tell? It's a man who's all turned to ash and stone by lava. Oh my god, I think I'm going to puke. Ah, get over it. Okay. <laughs> Talk to him. Mister? Mister? Any chance you're right in there? Christ, that's a horrific way to go. Mm, obviously, can't get across there. Need some other kind of item. It's a bubbling, boiling river of orange hot lava. You sure? It looks like tomato soup to me. Can it, you? It's lava, alright? Alright, alright. And he's got a spanner. It's a massive tool. It's a massive tool. I just looked at the spanner. You don't need to... I wasn't looking at the spanner. I was looking at you. <laughs> Why, you... I think I can use the crowbar to uh, help in that dimension where, like, Earth is made of floating rocks, like Pandora. Uh, where was it? Ooh, the top hat dimension. It, I can't remember where it was now. It's not this way. Look at the way they walk. So, where's Dan going? Come on, keep up. Oh, look, I forgot to look at that. Earth. Home. Oh, alright. Nothing more to say about it. <laughs> ah, here it is. Walked right past it. Okay, let's use the crowbar on this. The crowbar would probably dent the lamppost, but not take it down entirely. Oh, okay. So where was I supposed to use the crowbar? I do remember something I've forgotten already. Oh, I remember what I was supposed to do. Yeah. I did play this a while ago, so I do remember. So there shouldn't be too much stumbling around. Use the thermos to collect some lava. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> Aha! A thermos full of piping hot lava. Quick, put the lid on lest it cools. One step ahead of you, buddy. This lava is staying hot. Good to know. Good to know. That's impossible for one reason. 
but now we can use the lava to get across here somehow. I can melt through the lamppost with the lava. Why don't you then? Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Ah, look, a teeny tiny label on a lamppost. It reads, Blue Post Street Lighting PLC. This lamppost is certifiable, weatherproof, dinosaur proof, and lava proof. That's convenient. Isn't it just? I'll just have to use some other item then. <laughs> uh, contrived silliness of adventure games. Now I need to use. I can't remember. This is. I've actually got stuck. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Sponge stuff things. Hand rock. Blue tech. Yeah, can't quite remember what I'm supposed to do. Dan, help me. Stop running about. Talk to me. Are you following me? Yes, sorry. Sometimes I get concerned and you're going to walk off and leave me. So I like to stay within a certain radius of you at all times. <laughs> Just in case. Right. Okay. Need to now then. Somewhere else I was supposed to use a crowbar. I can't quite remember that. What was through here? It was the American place, wasn't it? I remember. No. That's not right. If I go through to the American dimension. Which maybe was here. I don't remember. Yes. I can get through those uh, boards. With the crowbar. Here we go. I knew I'd figure it out. Bah, carrying this thing around in my pocket is going to make me walk funny. <laughs> More funny. Yeah. No, you look just as funny. I remember in uh, Simon the Sorcerer, another adventure game um, Simon would keep his stuff in his magic hat which included uh, a ladder which he just sort of opened his hat wide and let the ladder fall into it <laughs> it's pretty funny I think Guybrush put uh, as Guybrush Streetboard put oh no wait what am I doing it's not here put like a giant uh, grabbing thing like a, a banana a giant banana picker in his pocket you know all right, now we use a wooden board to get over some lava. That makes perfect sense. It wouldn't catch fire or anything. Right, let's grab this spanner. Oh god, his arms come off. He's got an arm off. Oh, it's harsh. Yeah. It's a little pile of ash. It used to be this man's arm until I broke it. It's a broken underground sign. Can we get sued for that being here? No, this comes under parody. We're quite safe. Are you sure? Absolutely. Are you a lawyer? Well, no, but I read about it on the internet. Oh, the internet. Well, that's fine then if you read it on the internet. <laughs> Let's look at the volcano. It's London, and it's all smashed up and volcanic and that. In this dimension, a big volcano seems to have erupted in the middle of the city. Bet that took a few people by surprise. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's only geologically impossible. Yeah, there's no fucking volcanoes in England. Okay, now we've got the spanner. We can open this door. It was cold, and then it was super museum, wasn't it? What's so super about it? I have a bad feeling about this. Get in there, you big furry oaf. 